Hello, welcome or welcome back. My name is Ari and today we're talking about my July arcs. Now this month I'm really low on arcs. I've got two arcs. One of them's technically from the end of June and both of them were sent to me by the publishers. I didn't request them myself. We'll see if the publishers know my taste better than I do. The first book that I have is Daughter of Red Winter. I don't remember who either of these books are by, uh, but this sounds really interesting because it's a fantasy and it kind of sounds like a horror mixed with a fantasy. We have a uh, universe where if you can see the dead, you're going to be like, that's, that's bad and it's punishable by death by stoning, which is a really really bad way to go. Um, so our main character can see the dead but she also somehow gets mixed up with the group of people who kind of like punish people like this. <laughs> I, I don't I only vaguely understand the plot of this but she gets up she gets mixed up with this group of people who are like wizards like paladins maybe that's a good word she gets mixed up with this group of people who are like paladins because she tries to save a girl in the woods um but yeah the plot sounds interesting the whole seeing the dead thing sounds really interesting let's see where this goes the next book that I have is a little bit less interesting to me but I think it could be fun because I do like young adult fantasy romance um, but this is Violet Made of Thorns. I believe it's enemies to lovers um, with like a Prince Charming fairy tale twist. The, our main character Violet is a prophet in this court and she hates the handsome prince and he hates her back. He plans to get rid of her um, take away her job as soon as he gets promoted or in, as soon as he becomes king um, and she obviously doesn't want him to but he's screwing with her and challenges her to like predict something about his upcoming marriage and apparently she unlocks a curse and so they have to team up to break this curse and of course they're gonna fall in love because it's my fantasy. <laughs> So there's that. It sounds kind of fun, um, but probably is going to be a five star. But I'll let you know. The cover's really pretty though. All right, those are the two books I have. Let's jump right into reading them. Okay, so <laughs> Daughter of Red Winter. I was editing this video. I have all three clips. I go in, edit the first clip. I go back to grab the second clip, which is the Daughter of Red Winter clip, and it's gone. And I don't know what happened. <laughs> so I'm re-recording this. Uh, this is probably not as good as it could be because it's been probably 10 days or so since I've read Daughter of Red Winter and I've read quite a few books in between. <laughs> so we're at a little bit of different angle so I could look at my Goodreads review <laughs> and kind of, you know, ad lib stuff like that. So first off let's see if I could do a better description of the plot. As I said in this universe seeing the dead is punishable de by death because it unlocks like a weird magical power that the paladin like people um, don't want unlocked. Our main character Rain has been able to see the dead her entire life uh, but she's smart enough to hide the fact that she can see the dead because um, you know she doesn't want to die. Who would have thought it? One day she finds a dying girl in the woods and she brings this girl back to the monastery that her and her cult, the cult's its own story, let's not ask, um, are staying at and the group of warrior wizards are trying to get to this girl, stop her from doing something, um, and then helping this woman changes the pace of 
Rain's life. Uh, the cult thing's not really very important to the overall story, so if you hate cults you probably won't be bothered by it in this book. Uh, but there's a lot of other things to be bothered by in this book. This is like a two star for me. Right? The story itself, like the writing, the plot, everything like that, fine. I didn't have any problems with any of that. Um, what I did have problems with was like universe choices, like things that happen in the universe that weren't necessar necessary to the plot of the story, but were added as like world building aspects. Um, a lot of those I felt very uncomfortable with. Our main character is 17 years old, and at the very start of the book she is in an abusive relationship with a 31 year old man who has known her since she was like nine or thirteen or something like that. So there's grooming in this book, like straight up grooming on page and she has sex with this person on page and there's no point. It's supposed to create trauma. You can create trauma in somebody's life without having a child abuse situation and if you're not new to my channel you know that I hate hate the thought of anything even vaguely child abuse related. I almost DNF the book right at the beginning because of this situation and it, like I said it's not important to the plot so why is it in this book? Why did this author choose to put this icky situation in the book? Additionally there are queer characters in this book but the universe has an anti-queer type thing like there are queer characters but they're hated for being queer. I understand that, you know, this this happens in our normal everyday life, but there's no purpose in including queer trauma in this book because it's not part of the book, right? You're you're making up a fantasy world. Your fantasy world can be anything at all that you want it to be, and you choose to add pedophilia and queer trauma. Why? But why? <laughs> I'm okay adding those things with a purpose, but this doesn't have any purpose in the plot at all. My other main problem is one of the the main characters that is important to plot is clearly an incel and He's often described as a nice guy. He's a nice guy. He just has a problem with, you know, fantasizing about women in a really inappropriate way. But but he's really nice. It, it's okay that he fantasizes relationships with women and spreads horrible rumors about various women because um, he's really nice. He has some punishment towards the end of the book but not like it is discussed that hey like this is not okay that you did it to me at the end of the book but he's still excused for all the other women that he's done it to he just gets in trouble for doing it to a specific woman it was mentioned multiple times that this character doesn't see women as people the women in this book discuss that that he does not see women as people he sees them as objects or he fantasizes uh things about them and it's just like okay boys will be boys it it that's just him and it's like no <laughs> why would i ever want to read about this <laughs> In addition to that, you're probably not going to be surprised to know that there are little things in the story that it's pretty obvious that this 17 year old girl was written by a man and not by a woman. There's just things that she does that you're just like, women, women don't do that. <laughs> that's, that's not normal. That's, that's not how people behave. Uh, <laughs> so there's a little bit of the author doesn't necessarily consider teenage girls people. <laughs> I, I, I got that vibe throughout the book. Outside of these obviously big and important complaints, uh, the story was good but not great. 
but why when there's so so many different wonderful fantasy stories out there would I recommend you waste your time reading this book when th there's better <laughs> like the story is not good enough and the writing's not good enough dialogue's not good enough plot development's not good enough to make up for these glaring issues that I suggest somebody read this. So two stars from me, on to the next book. Second and final book of my arcs this month is Violet Made of Thorns by Gina Chin, I think? I don't remember. That's a random guess. Anyway, what did I think about this book? I like this book. I gave it four stars. I do not necessarily think everybody would like this book. So let's get into that. What is this about? Basically this is a fantasy universe that combines a lot of elements from like Disney princesses <laughs> is the best way I can describe it. Our main character Violet is a seer and wealthy kingdoms, big kingdoms, have seers. And seers do exactly what you think a seer would do. They kind of predict the future. Well, Violet has been working with the king for many years and she can see the future, but she might twist what she sees for the benefit of the king. So the prince, Cyrus, I think is his name, he is not happy that Violet lies. He thinks that it's wrong, it's bad, and they have this like enemies vibe. Like Cyrus keeps telling Violet that he's going to get rid of her whenever he becomes king which is soon because he has a prophecy and a curse basically that he needs to get married um, soon or else the world's going to end or something like that and she has basically given it to the end of the summer um, for him to fulfill this curse and find his true love. Uh, so this is enemies to lovers <laughs> and usually I hate the enemies to lovers trope because it's all miscommunication. Uh, this one's not miscommunication. They communicate well that they hate each other and exactly why they hate each other. Uh, Violet is a very very prickly character which actually makes sense for where she grew up. She grew up on the streets and used her ability to predict the future to lift herself up and become a seer um, and to get this power that she has, power and privilege that she has now. And she's like, she's aware of how poor people in this kingdom are treated and she's selfish enough to be like, yeah, I don't care. This isn't how I want to be treated. So this is how I'm going to behave. I'm going to take all advantage of my privilege. She's a very prickly character um, and she, she doesn't care what anybody thinks of her as long as she has her privilege. Um, she's antisocial. She doesn't make friends easily. She doesn't like crowds. She doesn't like people. Uh, it, it's, it's interesting but you are reading from her perspective and she is not likable and she's not even meant to be likable. There was a note from the author in at least my version, uh, I don't know if it's in the final book, but I had an arc and she, the author said that she wanted to write an unlikable character. Like the heroine of a story doesn't have to be somebody you like. They can be an awful person and that's what Violet is. Violet is a not a good person by any stretch of the imagination. And I think that's why I like her. If you're familiar with my channel, you know that I like unlikable female characters. <laughs> the end of this book isn't necessarily a satisfying ending. It's kind of an open-ended tale, which doesn't bother me, but that does bother some people. Additionally, the romance... <laughs> um, 
is not very romantic. So yeah. If you're reading this book for a princess-like romance and like actually enemies to lovers and you want that love to be anything other than like passionate hate, <laughs> probably not for you. I like this book. I gave it four stars. I don't necessarily think other people would like this book. So who would I recommend this for? People who like unlikable female characters. People who don't really like romances but don't like mind the idea of a romance in the book uh, because this is not this is not a romance. <laughs> Mm -mm. It, that's like dark romances I think. If you like things like that uh, you may like this. Uh, if you like the idea of like Disney princesses but want that like really turned on its head I think you might like this and then like just general fairy tale vibes but done in a very very different way. Um, if you like these things traditionally and you want something different. But that's it for my arcs this month. It's a short vlog. We got three coming up next month. Let me know down in the comments below if you had already planned or you were now planning to read either one of these books or if you're planning to not read it based off of my review. If you don't have any comments and you still want to leave me an emoji, leave me a red rose because we've got Daughter of Red Winter and Violet Maid of Thorns, which is thorns and then red and we get a... I hope you're following what I'm dishing out for you. Anyway, that's everything. I'll see you in the next video. Bye!